I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and this is Toy Talk. Today's adventure takes us to Auburn, New York in 1932, and the beginning of Red Star Express Lines. Starting in Auburn, but was soon to move to New Jersey to escape New York's high taxes. Red Star Express had a long and successful run. 1987 saw big changes coming to Red Star Express. A large trucking firm in Sydney, Australia became interested in Red Star. They made an offer to purchase the company and Red Star was sold to TNT and became TNT Red Star. At that point, Red Star Express joined the largest transportation network in the world. TNT Red Star continued to be a profitable holding of TNT. In 1992, TNT spun off its U.S. divisions to TNT Holdings and headquartered the Holdings Company in Rosemont, Illinois. To distance themselves from their former Australian parent company, TNT rebranded itself USF Freightways Corp. in 1996. At this time, the TNT initials were replaced by USF initials on all trucking divisions, including Red Star, to help avoid confusion with their former owner. In 2004, USF closed USF Red Star due to lost customers, revenue, and a union strike, making profitable operation unattainable. DCP is paying tribute again to this fallen flag in a 164 scale truck, which really is an older fallen flag than most would think since the name change in 1987 effectively wiped out the original company. DCP made this outstanding model of a Ford L9000 with drive and trailer. And here we go guys. This is the DCP by first gear Ford L9000 with 40 foot vintage drive and trailer for Red Star Express. It's the latest release in the Fallen Flag series for Red Star Express and it comes in the standard DCP by first gear box with two piece blister. Item number is 60 1257. And here it is out of the box. Isn't that sharp? The beautiful red cab with the black frame and the white trailer with that lovely red lettering on the side. A great looking truck. Now, let's start off with the trailer. This is the DCP 40 foot vintage dry van trailer, and you can see it is graphic up for Red Star. It has the beautiful Red Star Express in red, and then Red Star is outlined with a drop shadow in black. Really nice. And then you can see the big star in the center. It's got a trailer number up by the nose of T125. And then back on the back, it has some placards. One of them says drive safely and the other is empty. The roof is just plain silver and the underneath is black. It has a kingpin for DCP trucks, advantage die cast trucks, screw down landing gear like we expect. And it also has the nice spare tire and spare tire carrier right there. And the spare tire actually has spokes on the wheels. Then you can see it has the bars where the rear tandems would slide. They don't slide, but the bars are there to make it look like it. The tandems are in the back, which was the normal position for 40 foot dry van trailers. And they have the five spoke Dayton wheels, which are painted in black with silver rims. And then really nice tread pattern, soft rubber tires on them. Air brake canisters on each axle as well and working rear suspension. On the curb side of the trailer, you got your trailer number up front and Red Star Express right on the side. Very, very sharp graphics. Then, if you'll notice, there is actually a difference though. On this side, the drive safely placard is in the back panel and it's empty in the forward. On the street side, the drive safety panel is in the first one and the back one is empty. Pretty neat. On the back, you can see the black mud flaps, brake lights, turn signals, and the roof uh, clearance lights. Also, it has a 
slightly different logo for the Red Star Express. It says Red Star with the um, nice graphic below. It looks kind of like the wings graphic and then the star in it. Two placards there. One says drive safely, one empty, and one trailer number of T125. Doors do open to reveal the dry van interior, which is a wooden interior. Now that same logo you'll find up here on the front. Isn't that nice? Red Star Express. That's a really fancy logo. And then it has the hookup places and battery boxes for the reefer, which are really not on this trailer, but that's okay. Set that aside and then we'll talk about the truck. This is a cab tooling that I haven't really talked about before on my channel. I touched briefly on it in the branch video and you've you missed it, go back and see it with the link below. But now I'm going to do some more in-depth. I didn't really have much time to talk about it in the last one, so I just kind of left it as is. It is the DCP Ford L9000 cab. It's set up as a day cab, which most of these L9000s were. The LTL 9000s were where you started to find sleepers. It rides on five-spoke Dayton wheels that are painted black with little silver rims and silver center caps, and it has nice soft rubber tires. It's got the steps on the fuel tank option on this one, which was very common. Unlike a lot of the trucks, these had a molded in step, but this had the steps on the fuel tank. Got your battery box back there. Red Star Express lines logo right there, and ICC DOT numbers. Well, ICC back then. Door handles are tampoed silver. Chrome mirrors. Chrome air horns. And if you look, they're the two bell air horn on the driver's side. Very, very common. That's the way most of these trucks were not spread apart. Down here, you got the hood latch that's tampoed. Ford 9000 logo tampoed right on the side of the hood. And then you got a little chrome plated and orange tampoed piece here for the turn signal, the box style. There's one on each fender. Really, really nice. Then there's a little reflector marker light on the side down here on the side of the fender. Inside the cab, you have hard plastic windows, front and rear, and then open side windows. It's got the little wind wing, but it's got a detailed dash, steering wheel, and high back seats, and those are all in black on this one. They also put up here a visor. Really nice. It is painted in red just to match the rest of the truck. Now you can see the Ford lettering right there on the hood. The really nice uh, grill that they had on these. Really sharp. And this is the earlier Ford because it has the block letters written there. Later ones had an oval there. And then eventually they changed the grill to a bar style instead of a checkerboard. And put the oval in the center. The blue oval for Ford. Individual jewel style headlights here, and they are embedded in a little chrome bezel, which is then embedded into the fenders. These guys had the headlights put right in the fenders, really sharp. Chrome bumper down below. It's got the tapered on the ends, and then two little driving lights that are tampoed in white on the inside. You can see the two box turn signals and the two chrome mirrors, as well as the two air horns. Up high, you can see the hood does open on this one, and I'll show the engine in a minute. It has the roof lights, and they're molded in and then tampoed. Under the hood, they've got a brown engine on this one this time. So I'd say it's a Cummins, which is common on these, is Cummins engines. And it's a nice detailed uh, six-cylinder diesel. And then here is the air filter, which lines up with this opening right here on the hood. Really unique thing that Ford came up with styling wise, and really, in my opinion, it set off this truck is this little air intake, and then it's got the Ford 9000 logo in the center of it. Box turn signal over here, uh, door handle painted in nice Red Star Express Lines logo, mirrors, all the same detail on the others, except for on this side, they added a chrome exhaust stack with a big muffler and heat shield detail. That's because most of these guys only ran the one exhaust. It was weight savings, and you only had an inline six, so what did you need a big exhaust for? On the back here, you got two brake lights tampoed, fifth wheel that pivots a little bit, black plastic mud flaps, 
and a nice little chrome deck plate here. No pogo stick or airlines on this one, but that's okay. Underneath, we have the bottom of that brown engine, front spring suspension, and positionable steering. It is not true steering, it's just positionable. Drive shaft from the transmission to the first differential and another drive shaft to the rear differential. Air brake canisters on the axles and the differentials. Did a really good job. Quarter fenders are also painted in black on this one. Now let's go on and hook them all up. And there we go, guys. That is the Ford L9000 day cab pulling a 40 foot vintage dry van for Red Star Express Lines. It is a 164 scale die cast semi truck model made by DCP by First Gear in their Fallen Flag series. This was not the first time DCP has paid tribute to Red Star Express in the Fallen Flag series. I did a video on that B model Mac with a reefer trailer a while back and you should go watch it with the link down below. Also, I still have a few of these Ford L9000s with dry vans for Red Star Express. Available over on my website, dcptrucks.com. There is a link to the website while they last. Once they are gone, that link will disappear. However, I still have something else for you. It's the updated version of my DCP by First Gears Fallen Flags Checklist. That checklist includes the entire Fallen Flags released and announced to date. Grab it with the link below and check back for future updates. In the future, I will do a video about the entire TNT line of trucking companies, since there is little info about the Red Star Express. If anyone out there knows anything about Red Star Express and TNT truck lines, please comment below. I would really appreciate any info you might have to contribute. Thank you for watching. I'm Logan Skeel, and next week will be another Fallen Flag. So subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss it.